So I think I'm on live. Right. Yes, I'm live right now. <laughs> so that I can see people in, then I can make sure that I'm live right now. Right. Yes. Good morning. Yes, I see people say good morning to me. Hi. Good morning. Hello. See, I have see some comment here. People will see that I have done one of that before. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Wan. So you guys can hear me, right? Because just only me here, and then I, I before we go started, I want to make sure that everything here. Morning. Yes, I think people say morning to me. Hi. Yes. Hi, Corey. Yes. So somebody say yes to me that can hear me and the audience. Everything is good. Ah. Uh, loud and clear. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. So we can start our live today. So if you watch out, you, you see our poster for the live, you can see that we uh, I invite a guy to join with us. That is John. And I think some people see, uh, watch his um, the video before for the foldable and the three. Yes, I think people say good morning to me. As for me, it's evening time <laughs> and Friday. <laughs> yes, I want today off. <laughs> and also just only me here today, so I don't I I can feel of the mess. <laughs> okay, you can hear me and clear. Yes, I think um in our internet is good today, right? I think for last week, uh -huh, I don't know why something wrong with the internet. But today it's good. Yes, and people are very urgent to our friend. So let me make joy with him. Hi, John. Hi. Yes. Yes. Good so, morning. Yeah. It's all I, I think it's also good morning yeah. for most of the people. <laughs> yeah, for you it will be different, I think. Yes, okay. So I think I can change. How can I make it? Make you you bigger. How can I do that? See that I I always <laughs> I always can do that. Great. How can I make it? Uh, yes. How can I how can I make it your size bigger with the bigger screen? That can so people. Uh, I'm sorry to change a lot. I'm so sorry, guys. Be for this one, I'm not familiar with that. So I have to put that you here and then, no. So anyone can tell me. <laughs> I think I need help. <laughs> who can help me? <laughs> so who can help me? Because, because, because we, we, before we start, I, I also can make it great but i don't know why okay i think uh, I like I, yes I, I will take a rest and think about it how can i make, make it uh to the bigger screen and then i can change myself <laughs> okay <laughs> yes um so so we are so happy today to uh invite our friend to come that uh to join our life and all you guys can see that he make a really great uh, surprise for us. It's a foldable and a three pole. Yes, I, I think a lot of people know you. Maybe you can introduce yourself or say something. Yes. Well, I'm uh, John from Proper Printing. And um, yeah, I uh, wanted to talk about foldable and the three and some of the projects that uh, I'm working on uh, currently. And I want to start with uh, well, where my channel started with uh, the quick tool change. Uh -huh. And I think that's uh, interesting to show because I'm my channel is uh, a little more than one year old, I think one year and two or three months. 
So it has been a cool journey, and it, uh, I think it's nice to to show uh, some of the things that uh, that I've done in that period. And yeah, uh, a lot in the, at the end of last year, I made this uh, foldable in a three, and I'm going to tell you why I've done it and uh, why I've made it foldable, what the reasoning is behind that, and uh, how I got there. So that's the the idea I'm having. But actually, beside this one, I think you always have a lot of idea. It's a weird idea. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm always trying to just come up with uh, with new ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the ideas aren't, well, don't seem the best ones at first, but it's just uh, like trying. And um, uh, often when you have an idea and you're trying it, then uh, it turns out that you can make new ideas from that or improve those ideas so at the end you can uh, have a, a cool result which is working and uh, now my uh, goal is to inspire people to uh, yeah just with uh, pitching new ideas to come up with uh, new solutions and some of the ideas i'm building upon and uh, can result in a foldable print like this so and often uh, things aren't uh, yes some of the ideas are just because of uh, an earlier idea. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So, um, yeah, shall I start with that uh, quick tool change? Yes. Line yes. here somewhere. Yes. Before you did, did this uh, portable, I, I see that you also did a lot of change on your uh, Ender 3. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it started with uh, the CR10. I've bought that uh, that printer yeah, uh, uh, one and a half year ago. And it was, uh, a, it was a good printer, of course, but I wanted to do more with that. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was... Um, yeah, I was at shopping. I was in a shopping spree and I saw that uh, that a laser cutter, uh, that small tiny laser cutter. I thought that's cool to add to the printer so I can uh, engrave stuff. I didn't know what to do with that, but it wasn't uh, that expensive and a neat thing to try. Uh -huh. that, uh, that's this one over here. It's just a 500 milliwatt laser. And um, you cannot you cannot uh, burn through wood, but you can engrave wood or uh, and, and yeah, dark paper and those kind of uh, stuff. But it's uh, a fun thing to begin with. But with this, um, the problem with this, when it's out of the package, you have four of these or two neodymium magnets. I think it was two. And the idea is that you can just uh, clamp it to the standard shroud with those magnets and then it will sort of stay in place. But I wasn't uh, all too convinced. So I was, um, yeah, I wanted to make a clamping system so this uh, laser is in a position and it's fixed. And the funny thing is that those, that clamping system is uh, based on a camera tripod where that camera is on right now, so I cannot show <laughs> it. But I've made this quick tool change and it's uh, uh, already pretty long on, uh, on Thingiverse. It's uh, an open platform. And it's possible to, to clamp different tools on that. So for example, this uh, laser. And um, it's uh, I've made some some blank uh, tool holders. So you can download only this, this block and make your own tools. And my idea was to, um, yeah, to look on, on Thingiverse and create like a, a platform on which everyone can create their own tools. Uh, because it's not only uh, a... Um, a laser cutter, you can also add a, uh, another hot end like the E3, E3D. And those, so you can swap out between hot ends. So I use, for example, the stock hot end for printing PLA, but mm -hmm. the E3D I can use to print polycarbonate and more difficult materials. So that was the idea. So it can uh, qu quickly swap within, uh, within between tools. So I have some other tools here, this, uh, this grinder. So there's what where everything I started with. I've used this grinder to uh, make PCBs with the copper and uh, remove the copper with this thing, and it went uh, pretty well. So it's, you have basically a, a, a tabletop machine 
which can uh, with which you can do more than just uh, 3D printing, and even a pen plotter. This thing. Now that's a uh, here at the back I've made with the pen plotter. <laughs> so that, uh, yeah, that was a cool. That's where where everything uh, started with. With this quick change. Now, and if anyone has a question, then just uh, hit it in the comments. Maybe I can uh, see someone so I can answer them. Yes. Uh, actually, I will, uh, but my question is, how can I change that? Because I want to slow your printer <laughs> back. I am not here. Did yes. I yes. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> yes, because I just want to uh, show a big picture for your printer. Because, because mm -hmm. uh, for your printer, I also found some something look like our in the in the three V two, like the the screen and the the but the yellow and the red one. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah, this is the emergency stop because well, some of my viewers know that um, yeah, while experimenting, not everything will go as well as planned. So, for example, I've blew up two boards in one video because I <laughs> I wanted to reverse the extruder motor for this uh, flexi drive, and uh, I didn't want to change the firmware. So I thought, well, I'll just uh, connect the step motor driver, the stepper motor differently. Um, yes. Yeah, and then the chances are that you blew up your, your driver board. So I've made a video after that, which explained sort of how you can uh, how you can do that without blowing up that uh, that stepper driver. But it yeah, it's sometimes it's, it's handy to uh, use this, uh, and I've actually used it once when printing food because I was with uh, <laughs> some uh, some wrong settings and I, it was purging out a lot of food, so I had to uh, to dive to that button. But indeed, it has a, a, a large touchscreen over here, and it runs at the uh, with a Latipanda, uh, Latipanda. And uh, uh, do you know that uh, Latipanda is a, a small computer with a uh, i i5 or i well with an Intel processor. I don't know by heart which one. And uh, this is just a touchscreen, so it's like a tablet, and uh, it has an Arduino uh, processor on board, and you can connect. And uh, disconnect all kind of uh, of hardware, for example, a, a relay or a, an analog, uh, an analog in LEDs, all kind of stuff. So it works pretty well. You have a computer and an Arduino and a, a board on top, and you can connect all kinds of hardware. And the idea is that uh, was that I can I've designed my own software which can control the um, uh, the G codes for the printer and the Arduino. So I have one one piece of software which can enable and disable the printer, and my idea was also to measure current and, uh, that, and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So, and um, yeah, that's where it started with. I'm still working on that software, by the way, behind the scenes. Yeah. And it, it works pretty well. The the screen here, and the standard position of the screen over here wasn't uh, <laughs> it wasn't working with the foldable mechanism, so I had to change it uh, to here. And uh, yeah, I can yeah, start why I have why I started uh, without uh, of why I started with this foldable mechanism in the first place. I'll clean this up because it's a, a funny story. Yeah, so so you say that you you have that kind of idea because you want to uh, print food or take it to the kitchen, right? Have you tried that to print the food after you finish your project? <laughs> yeah, well, oh, once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but I have to to make a uh, a redesign of this one. This is the the food uh, dispenser. So it's uh, like the quick tool tool change I just have shown. I can uh, remove this one as well. Uh -huh. and the, the food the the food dispenser on here. And therefore, I've made this uh, flexible shaft, and this flexible shaft can this be disconnected as well. And that was uh, a funny mod to do, 
So it's uh, the idea was to have the flexi drive to be disconnected easily and connected to other devices or to other tools like that, uh, the fruit dispenser. So this can be connected on here and this will power that fruit dispenser. Uh... But the problem was that the fruit dispenser, it was, uh, it, it needed too much force. So this shaft started twisting and um, I have to make a, a, a new gear ratio. So it doesn't, not that much force goes on this shaft. <laughs> and this goes fast enough so that that is going to work uh, the only thing that this uh, thing can purchase uh, sans mayo so it's uh, mayonnaise and that's that's um, yeah that's uh, thin enough for for perching but you cannot uh, connect, you cannot build anything with it but okay. the whole idea started with almost a year ago and uh, we went to a um we went to, to a presentation of a, a chef who is uh, pretty famous in uh, the Netherlands. It's called uh, Jan Smink. He uh, lives in the northern part of the Netherlands. And he has a, a restaurant in which he shows uh, food printing. And he started food printing. And, um, and he combines that with uh, this regular, uh, his regular dishes. And uh -huh. his, his goal is to uh, use food printing to um, that to, to make the, the food richer. So he isn't going to print out a steak, but he is going to print out, uh, for example, uh, a logo or uh, a nice um, a nice thing out of chocolate and yes, makes yes, it uh, look yes. better. So he um, uses 3D printing to enrich the whole uh, the whole dish. And I thought that was pretty cool. And the, he uses a similar dispenser as I've used in uh, this one. And I thought, that it's cool if that is possible um and the idea was to make a, a printer which is capable of printing food but i also wanted to show it to people so it would be cool if this is uh yeah, if i can bring it with me so i thought how to do that in the best way that it can fit in a trolley and then i was thinking of maybe it uh, can be uh, can be folded yes. so that was uh, that's the thing that uh, that it all started with um, I wanted to make it foldable, put it in a suitcase and go with a couple of friends to a restaurant and, uh, and start printing food over there. Um, because I, I still want to do that. It's, uh, it's still on the list, but because of what's happening in the world right now, that this is, uh, this is impossible, but <laughs> it's still the, the thing that we, we would like to do. But the nice uh, thing about an, an idea of this is that um, it, it, uh, it, you come up with new ideas because this is uh, falling like uh, like this. But the first problem is that there was a the screen was here uh, with the standard uh, and the three, so it yeah. has to yeah. be placed somewhere else. And the power supply is placed over here, and that's also not working together with this uh, folding mechanism. And this clamp over here uh, is used to clamp it in a vertical direction and in the horizontal direction as well. So, and if I place it in the homing position, then it can fold. Yes, yes. But because of this problem of that, uh, that power supply, I had to find a new position for the power supply. So I have placed it uh, here uh -huh. and it turns out to be uh, a nice it fits well pretty snugly at the bottom of this uh, printer so that and i if i didn't want to fold this printer then i didn't come up with the idea of placing the power supply over there so that's what i'm trying to do just try things and uh, see what is needed to get it done and then sometimes you come up with uh, with new ideas so now it's uh, a lot a lot smaller footprint and it it should be it should fit in an uh, in a standard pelican case, but that's something I still have to figure out. <laughs> and actually, before before your um, foldable printer, I I also see one guy also make the eight two in the suitcase too. I think he also have the same idea with you. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen that one. Oh okay. Uh, often my ideas aren't. I, I'm yeah. Sometimes ideas are. You think that you have come up with them, but someone else was first, or you come up yeah. with them 
separate from each other. So it's always difficult to know uh, if you are the one who came up with it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's just, just sometimes because you want to do something and then the idea just comes up for some yeah. people, some purpose. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it has, sometimes has advantages because if you um, if you know that uh, something already exists, then you will start thinking within those boundaries. And if you are going with a, a blank uh, sheet, then you, yeah, you could sometimes come up with a different approach than uh, already out there. So it has some advantages. So I, I'm never going to say that an idea is mine because I often cannot uh, prove that it is. And uh, but that's not the most important thing, uh, I think. Yes. And uh, yeah, another thing that I've liked about this printer is this, uh, this custom connector. So I can connect and disconnect uh, the whole bed. And this is uh, a printed connector. Uh -huh. The idea of the printed connector started basically back to that quick tool change uh, in which I added this uh, standard D sub connector. Um, so I can connect and disconnect the yeah, this this uh, tool. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I have to yeah, with that uh, that laser, for example, you have to remove this and lay it somewhere while it's connected. Then you can add the laser. But with this uh, this D sub connector, I can disconnect this whole tool and swap it out with, uh, for example, this this laser module. But uh, the problem was that this. Um, this bowling tuber at the center sometimes sprung loose, so uh, I came with uh, came up with the idea of making a, a custom connector, in which you can just add a bowden coupler, so it stays in place, and that idea eventually ended up being this idea of the disconnecting the whole bed with the connector in which a, a cable chain is integrated, and I still think that uh, printing connectors. It can be pretty interesting if you combine it with other uh, features which aren't standard in, uh, in connectors like the Bowden tube or a, uh, a drag chain like this, a cable chain. So that's, uh, and yeah, you can incorporate a connector in 3D printed housings and it enables uh, new possibilities that I uh, didn't uh, thought of before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, so uh, I, I see one, one question say that, how do you get the money for your project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> well, I don't well, have a girlfriend, that uh, helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a full-time job besides uh, YouTube. I'm uh, working as an, uh, an engineer within uh, the electronics branch and um, um, uh, I, I'm a test engineer, and what we do, we make automated tests for printing PCBs. So we have uh, for in industrial and, uh, and medical appliances we, uh, where we work, we actually put the components uh, on the PCBs. And uh, at the end of the line, we are going to test it to see if everything works. And that's uh, fully automated. So the PCB itself is placed on a fixture. and uh, the fixture is connected to a computer or to different uh, hardware, which can uh, which can measure or control and uh, simulate things, and um, and the computer uh, has a, a user interface which shows the operator what he has to do, or it press start, scan the barcode, check if a LED is working, or set a, a potential meter, and at the end of the whole whole sequence, it says if the print has uh, passed or failed and all measurement data is, uh, is stored. And uh, we are a, a team of, uh, of two, and we are making, uh, yeah, we're making the, the, the fixtures, the software, and I'm currently doing a lot with, uh, with LabVIEW because LabVIEW is easy to, to make this kind of software with. So that's uh, the full-time job I'm having besides this. So uh, yeah, that's what it's financing uh, basically. That's yeah, funny. so 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 that's the reason that you can um also make a lot. That, I mean that you 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 can understand the three D printer a lot, and you also can do the um, uh, the graph, and you can use the slicer. So because yeah. of your job, yeah, it, it's a bit native. 
Uh, yeah, it's, um, controlling a printer is looks a lot like what I'm doing at work, because if you uh, control your if you connect your printer through USB at the computer, you have a, a serial port, and you can just use a terminal to send the G commands directly. Mm -hmm. And that's often what I do when I'm controlling instruments, for example, a power supply, a controllable power supply. Mm -hmm. uh, you can control or you can connect a computer to a power supply and say uh, go to 24 volts and uh, go on or off or measure the current. Those kind of commands are basically the same, similar commands that I use with printers. So I can uh, make similar left view drivers, which can control a printer and do whatever I want with uh, well, within reason, of course, with that printer. So it, it looks a lot what I'm uh, doing at work. And uh, it's a nice combination of uh, software, electronics and, uh, and mechanics. So uh, that's uh, yeah, what I like about uh, 3D printing, that this is uh, the, those three facets of, uh, of, of technique within uh, one machine. Okay. So, so for your printer, this one, is it um, I mean, in, in my opinion, it looked like a display. <laughs> so I want to know that, did you print that? I mean, I mean, um, is that, have you ever tried to compare that to print out like the mobile one? Because, because it, it, I mean, for the, um, it can foldable. Is that stable? Um, it's of course, it, it it the only thing it can do is decrease the print quality yes because the, the idea wasn't to increase it uh, and yeah. therefore i've made uh, in older videos i've made the dual z axis and the other mods which were uh, targeted towards making it as accurate as possible and that printer is right now my production printer and that's printing for example these uh, polycarbonate parts over here so it's uh, that's my actual machine and this is more of a testing platform uh, running my own software and, and to, yeah, do some fun things with it but for printing food um, your stomach isn't going to see if it's uh, one tenth of a millimeter larger or smaller so for printing food that accuracy wasn't that necessary oh okay so, <laughs> but at the end you, you eat that food <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the thing it does, it, it tends to go vertical. So you can feel it that even if it's at this angle, you can feel that this wants to go into this direction. So it's uh, pretty stable. But I reckon if you go at the top and uh, hit those resonant frequencies, then it's, it's not as good as uh, the standard printer. But that wasn't the goal. And if it is, then uh, you can make... Uh, uh, some kind of clamping system here at the bottom and yeah. some other thing, uh, so some well, well, brace here diagonally and you have your strength back. So yeah, uh, you can always find a way to make it work in the end. So that's uh, not something that I'm too worried about. But I often get questions uh, to, yeah, why don't you make a comparison uh, prints? Uh, and that's because um, I don't think it's often needed or I think, uh, yeah, okay, it's uh, nice like this and I forget to, to print with it. So uh, <laughs> it's more about the idea and then I forget the, the actual thing that what it's this is supposed to do and that's printing. So uh, often at the end of the video, then I'm happy yeah, it works, but I often forget to, uh, to actually print with it. But um, yeah, I yeah. should do that more often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I forgot the, the purpose you have that idea is for food. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. And I'm not done with uh, with this printer yet. Uh -huh. Nice. And, and I also see that you have the other one, the yeah. S5. So that, the that's, S5. Yes. Yes, that, that's the, the project that you are doing right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so large that it doesn't fit within this frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think some people have watched your video, see that you, you have done some um, something. Yeah. Like <laughs> Which I said it was a core XY. <laughs> so that, that is going to uh, to haunt me for, for life, I think. Uh, this, uh, yes. I can 
So yeah, it's <laughs> almost all, everything is outside of the frame. But <laughs> it doesn't have a print bed right now because I'm currently working on uh, on that print bed. I have oh, it wow. somewhere here. Yeah, I can show it. I am uh, upgrading the print bed with this uh, silicon heater. It's uh, within within here. So this uh, thing can heat up pretty fast uh, right now. And mm -hmm. I'm making a video in which I show how to control this uh, silicon heater. Oh. But, yeah, I want to print large things, of course. Otherwise, I sh haven't bought this printer. But I want to make large uh, things out of more difficult materials. Uh, like uh -huh. The goal with uh, this printer is to print rims for a car. Um, two months uh, at the start of this year, I um, we've bought a, an old Mercedes. And um, yeah, the idea is to, to print out a rim for that uh, for that car to see if it's even possible to uh, to to drive on 3D printed rims, and to see what is needed to get us yeah, to get there. And um, therefore, I've bought this printer, and I'm working my way towards that goal to upgrade this printer to make it able to to print those rims. Uh -huh. And uh, in order to print, well, I'm, I reckon that I need better materials than just uh, PLA or PTG. So I need an enclosure. And because this thing is so large with this print bed going back and forth, like uh, more than a meter distance, I wanted to reduce its footprint. So I have I thought I'd made a, a, a Corex Y machine, but it's a, a moving portal printer in which this whole gantry is uh, moving back and forth. And uh, here at the center is the, the bed, which is stays stationary. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it still has to to show if uh, if this approach is uh, is working or not. Uh, it's it's pretty promising because this is stiffer than uh, than I thought it uh, it was. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, it it it's going to wobble. I've made a video in which I showed how much uh, this wobbles. But. Um, for for printing the rims, I reckon that this would work, but I'm going to further improve it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Is it that someone someone asked that? Question. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Are you the guy? <laughs> yes. Yep, it's me. Yes. It is. <laughs> that was the printer I was referring to, which was uh, so stable. So it's almost the opposite of this one. Uh, that printer is. Uh, I've made it to make it as stable as possible. Yes. And, and I see Vin say some say you something, but I I can't understand. <laughs> What's that? Look you to see. <laughs> nice to see you here. <laughs> ah, I think same language with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember you also the nerf neck. Yes, that you all have it. Yes. <laughs> see, we, a lot of people just in and say hi, and I think I can go back and have some questions to see the updates yeah see that people oh see want to see the update for more update for the food <laughs> oh, and then, yeah yeah that's uh, that's uh, postponed i'm first going to work on this uh, this printer for printing those rims and when that's finished i have some neat ideas for this uh, there is a reason why i can disconnect this uh, this heated bed of course because I have some some uh, fun ideas with uh, this one, and uh, yeah, that's uh, still what I'm working on. Like what I, for example, can do is uh, well, I'm going to give a little teaser. Then <laughs> I can uh, place this into this direction, and some of you can already guess what uh, what this will enable. So those are things that I'm still working on for this uh, this machine. Yes. And if you don't know, then uh, I would suggest uh, waiting for uh, a little while. And uh, those are some fun ideas still. So this will be my, my tinkering machine platform. And mm -hmm. uh, the food printing, yeah, it, it's still something that I really want to, to work on. Yes. So but first, uh, first this one, because yeah, because of the, the pandemic, I cannot uh, bring this thing on the road. And uh, yes. the driving in a car isn't uh, that kind of problem. So in the, yeah, that's what this uh, this machine. Well, well, I just started with it, and uh, I'm currently uh, filming the the next upgrade. Uh, what I showed with uh, the print bed, 
that uh, that silicon heater and i want to heat up the whole enclosure so it's going to be a pretty large enclosure still but i have uh, this uh, one kilowatt heater <laughs> and this it's a crazy <laughs> if you're going to heat this uh, thing up then uh -huh. at first you think well nothing is happening but once it heats up then it it's pretty fast at uh, at 100 degrees and it can go up to 200. It's and, a uh, heater? Sorry? It's a heater or, or what's that? Yeah, yeah I can uh, put 230 volts on here and then uh, this will heat up. It's like uh, uh, this, I, I reckon that this thing can heat up this whole room here. Uh -huh. And I'm going to, to place this right here. So with some uh, fence at the bottom, so it will heat up the whole chamber. So that's um, what I'm currently working on. I'm showing with uh, a duet board how I can control this heater and that uh, that thousand watt uh, heat bed with a silicon uh, plate. Mm -hmm. and I've learned already a lot from that because I thought it was pretty easy. It's it's not too difficult, but uh, it's um, yeah. There were some things that that were some uh, learning uh, experience for experiences for me. So that's um, what I'm working on right now, then heating that enclosure. And I've already designed the, the enclosure. And um, right now I'm waiting for the parts for that enclosure. I first oh. wanted to make a simple enclosure just for keeping the warmth uh, inside. But um, I started designing Infusion and I, I caught up a bit and I uh, lost myself and I've made the it's a bit of overkill. <laughs> it's it's almost ridiculous, but I've made an enclosure. I thought, well, while I'm working on it, I might as well make the, the coolest enclosure I'm able to, to make. So that's what I've done. So that's uh, I'm very excited to, to see the, uh, the parts for that enclosure. So it's uh, going to be large, big, and insane. But yeah, the project itself is, uh, is pretty insane. So, and um, yeah, I often got some, some remarks from uh, from people who said, well, printing rims, it's not going to work. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and I think that there, uh, there are some steps which has to be overcome. For example, the first problem would be getting the tire around it and uh, getting it uh, up on pressure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but uh, I first want to design a rim and try that. And when it isn't possible to put a tire around that, then I have to come up with a solution how to get the tire on there. And I have a plan B and a plan C for that. And if the tire is on there and uh, we're going to put it on the car, then the question is if it's possible to even be uh, on that car. And if it is, then it would be pretty interesting to, uh, to hit the brakes uh, at full, uh, full speed. To hit the brakes uh, and, and to steer, that, that's uh, going to be well, pretty uh, terrifying. But I reckon that there are, at these stages, the, the rim will break. And then I'm going to figure out what to do to overcome that. So maybe it's a redesign or use other materials. Mm -hmm. now, for example, heat uh, can be a problem uh, when the, the brakes heat up. But maybe we have to find different materials for, for just on that axis. So there, there are possibilities and uh, we're just working my way towards that goal and see what's happening. And uh, the idea is to, to learn uh, along the way to see what, uh, how far we can go. But I'm not going on the public road, so don't worry. <laughs> I don't want to uh, need to hit the brakes and then my whole, uh, whole rim uh, breaks apart and then uh, I'm going to crash somewhere. So uh, everything will be or in my backyard or uh, on the track if, uh, if it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like people from from Germany or something say that? Island. Yeah, I, I I don't know what's that, but it looked like your it's friend. It's not Germany. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Isn't that close to the Bermuda Triangle? Uh -huh. I'm not uh, that good at. Uh... <laughs> okay. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> I think you should. You could even print a tire out of TPU. Yeah. 
that, that's going, that's pretty interesting to to make a whole tire out of TPU itself. Uh huh. But the problem is that I need even a bigger printer. <laughs> this printer will be capable of printing 19 inch rims. It's uh, 19 inches around 47 centimeters by heart. So if I'm going to print a, a tire out of TPU, then I have to make a smaller rim or a, even a bigger printer. But the idea is it's pretty fun. <laughs> but I reckon if I'm going to do that, then it will blow up like a balloon because you don't have the uh, steel wiring inside. But it's or I have to print it uh, without air, like the, uh, the Michelin has the uh, airless tire. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he bought together with me the car. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can go for the comments here, see that they might have some detail interesting thing here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, again, if anyone has questions, then uh, then rise them up. And I can answer them. Maybe I can. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say this is not a core XY machine. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> For one time. Oh. Yeah, printing an Alice style would be great. Mm -hmm. But the design of the rim itself is going to be uh, going to pre be pretty da daunting as well. And I have some some fun ideas how to how to design a, a rim like that. Uh -huh. and I first want to, to do it at 15 uh, 15 inch. That's a standard size. And uh, I'm going to a local garage. And I he um, he he, uh, he checked uh, the car. It, it was the, the yearly uh, control. And um, there were some things like the electronics wasn't perfect. And he said, well, I just have made it uh, quick and dirty. So it uh, was uh, was good. And he asked if uh, he, uh, he should have done it a bit better. And I said, well, <laughs> I, I showed him what I was going to do with that car. And then he uh, he understood that he that, that the chances are that the car isn't going to survive. But um, I've already. Um, uh, I'm yeah, already discussed with him that I'm going. I, uh, it's possible to put uh, the, the tire around it at his machine. So uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully no one gets killed then. What model? It's a great question. I'm not thinking. What sure. model? <laughs> what model? <laughs> <laughs> It looked like so cool, so people don't That's know. Watch, watch the video, watch your video, then you can see which model I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not into Mercedes. I've bought that. Well, the funny thing is that um, the, the the car I bought it from was from a friend of mine, and he is in a, he has a small car company, and I asked him if he has an uh, an old car, uh, which I can use for this this project. I first wanted to to buy a small car like a uh, Daihatsu or Matisse or something like that, something cheap. And um, he said, "I've got a perfect car for you," and he showed a picture of that Mercedes. And yeah, I, I started laughing because it's it's not a small car, but it's um, it's an iconic car. So I think uh, in the end, maybe that's it's, uh, it's even better than a small car because this is it's a lot more fun and. Uh, I really hope I do not destroy it because I kind of starting to like that car because it drives fantastically. <laughs> uh, I never had something with Mercedes, but since that car, I was uh, I was surprised. <laughs> That's so fair. That's a good question. So so what I'm still, after? Um, Yes. I'm still discussing with uh, with National Instruments because uh, Labview is not not free and it's not cheap, but Labview has a um, a community edition since this year, uh -huh. and I'm uh, discussing with them if I'm allowed to use that community edition within my channel. Uh, the community edition says that 
it can can be used uh, for commercial purposes and well i do make some money out of youtube so it's uh, commercial and um but i want to open source that software so i'm still discussing with uh, national instruments if i'm able to use their community edition to open source my software so that's still something um, that i want to do in the future i really hope it's possible i cannot should know a reason why because uh, more people will get familiar with uh, LabVIEW uh, that way so i reckon it should be possible but i first want to be sure if i'm allowed to do that That's a good question. Someone asks if uh, Creality will work to make the folding features a standard purchase purchasable item from Creality directly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks so pretty. What model, model printer do we have on the table? Uh -huh. um, this is the Creality CR10 S5. It's the large one. And this was a uh, M3 Pro. Uh, I, by the way, I got some questions about people if uh, my mods were also compatible with the first M3 version. Uh, well, the first, uh, the standard, so not the Pro. And as far as I know, the only difference between the pro version and this uh, pro uh, in the standard version is this center uh, center profile. Uh, mm -hmm. This profile is 40 by 40 millimeter, and the standard N3 is 40 by 20, so it's uh, it's 20 millimeters narrower. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's the only uh, difference. And I actually designed everything around the standard N3 because there was one person i don't know his name anymore but he has posted a, a complete assembly on uh, grabcat and i've downloaded that but that's the the assembly of standard and the three so all my designs are based on that standard and the three and the only thing that i've done is i added a uh, an offset from this center beam so most of the mods can be added directly to the standard and the three but for example this uh, this screen is connected to this beam you have to add a 10 millimeter spacer and then you can connect everything like uh, like I've done with M3 Pro. But that was the question that I was, was often, uh, how's the tablet connected to the printer? Um, well, this one isn't. I have uh, connected it through the web interface, but this one, uh, this is uh, actually not a tablet. I'll turn it again. Uh, this is a loose screen, and on the at the bottom is a uh, easier to fold it. Here at the bottom is a, a computer. You can see here the USB connections and uh, HDMI, and it's a small uh, computer. It's a Leti Leti Panda, Let Leti Panda, Panda, Leti Panda, yeah. So this is uh, it's like a the size of a Raspberry Pi, but this thing can run Windows. And I was hoping that it would run Linux, but it doesn't. So I'm stuck with uh, well, it doesn't uh, do that out of the box. So I'm just using uh, Windows, and it's connected through a USB. So here at the screen, you can just see the uh, the communication port, and I can, can communicate through that port. <laughs> need to sell something like this for people with limited space <laughs> and for school <laughs> yeah i mean okay i i got that <laughs> yeah it's a uh, it's ideal to 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 put it on there uh, on the somewhere it's uh it's a lot lower right now yes yeah i was uh thinking of selling uh selling parts 
but it turns out to be uh, pretty difficult to do that. Uh, for example, this uh, I, I had the idea to to sell this quick tool change as a, as a kit because it's a, a pretty uh, a pretty daunting uh, and, and tricky upgrade to do because you have to cut all your wires. And I can imagine if you are uh, not that familiar with 3D printing and you still you just have one printer, then it's not it's a pretty uh, hurdle to just uh, cut all those wires. And uh, if you are planning to do that, make absolutely sure that you've printed everything, because it <laughs> it will be difficult to uh, to print stuff if you have cut those wires, of course. So and when I started with this, I had just one printer. Now, I had the Anet A8, but I don't consider that thing as a printer. And I've um, made ex <laughs> 10 times sure if I have uh, I've printed everything and everything fitted, and then I added it to here. But um, uh, I wanted to sell this as a kit, but it's pretty difficult to, to launch it when uh, uh, doing that uh, on, on your own. But it's still something that... Um, I'm thinking of to do in the future, but uh, I've got these questions often. We want to sell it as a kit, but I have to do shipping and uh, all those uh, liability uh, issues that is uh, pretty difficult to do. So I'm similar with this foldable uh, system. It's uh, difficult for me to, to sell those stuff. <laughs> if you destroy your own printer, then uh, yeah, I will be the one who is uh, <laughs> who's going to be in trouble. <laughs> Is that a joke? Well, I'm a. When there was one, uh, the Anet A8 was my first printer, and I I never forget that I, that thing was printing at one time, and I uh, I was uh, checking on it, and it smelled like uh, a burnt chicken, and it was because of that that print bed, the connector connected to the print bed was uh, completely black. And the way it was connected was, um, yeah, it wasn't. It was kind of a fire hazard, and I have heard uh, similar stories from others that uh, the anode was a, a fire hazard. So, and since then, I, I used it for parts, and I even have uh, removed some parts from it, which just broke <laughs> while I was removing it. I needed a, a micro switch. I picked off that micro switch, and it just broke in half. So. Uh, now it's for me. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just funny to to talk about the uh, Anet printer. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. yeah, there is a um, yeah, there is a, a it should be a Pelican box in which this will fit pretty well, and that's uh. That's what I want to do, and I'm going to pick up this uh, this project again. So we want to do a, a vlog style video, which you're going to go to a restaurant and uh, and print food there. So in those, they are, we have a, a nice location on which we want to go, and we can make some cool B-roll and uh, a story out of that. And that's including that uh, that suitcase with uh, my logo on it, uh, as large as possible, of course. <laughs> I can see that I'm not the only one who uh, isn't that fond of uh, the Anet uh, printers. <laughs> oh, nice, I'm not on my own. One is saying he has uh, upgraded it for a CR10 S5. Well, that's a pretty uh, big upgrade from a printer like that to, uh, to an S5. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, so there are more questions. Mm. <laughs> I think you see that. Oh. 
Thanks to seek assistance to provide you once as a kid, please. Yes, I still have that as a plan, not not as a concrete plan, but um, I, I really want to, to provide those, uh, especially the quick tool chains as a mod. Um, for every printer, I'm going to add that quick tool change. Some upgrades I've done, I'm not going to add on the printer. It was just fun to, to look if it works. And um, the quick tool change on its own is the upgrade that I'm going to put on any machine. Maybe not on this one, maybe in the future. This one, I have something else in, uh, in mind. It's uh, going to be a, a different hot end, and this one will be specific for printing those rims at first. But all my other printers, I often swap between uh, hot ends, and that's that's the thing I do most. I uh, swap between the 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 E three D hot end and the stock hot end, depending on what which material I'm going to print with. So that's uh, that's something I definitely want to do. Uh, but I was uh, trying to find a solution for that uh, that Bowden tube, which is uh, springing loose sometimes, because that's something that is that can't happen when it's a final product. So I've made that uh, that custom connector. I have it, I have it here. My God. So this is uh, the quick tool change with the custom connector integrated to it. So I can make my own configuration. And uh, at the other side is the connector. Oh, it's it's uh, all close. But in that connector, you have the, uh, the Bowden coupler. So it's uh, it, it's unable to spring loose. So that's it's working better. But the downside of this approach is that this is uh, pretty difficult to make a, as a final product because this is a, a daunting model. So I have to, um, yeah, there are, it's not as easy as just uh, releasing the product. But both have its uh, ups and downs. So that's uh, still uh, something that I'm uh, thinking on uh, to, to do it correctly. So for, for now, it's, um, everything can can be downloaded from my website and you can uh, try it yourself. Selling it as a kit is uh, pretty difficult. And what I'm thinking about is uh, to, as a starter, to not sell this as a whole kit, but to sell all the, uh, the non-printable things like the inserts. I uh, use the M3 inserts a lot and well, all the M3, M4 and M6. Uh, because adding inserts to a uh, to a 3D printed part works awesome. And I often get questions from people, which inserts did you use? Where, um, and, and also these connections, for example, where did you get those connections? And because I have a, a small company, I'm able to, to buy those inserts from uh, distributors. So I get a bag of 500 of these inserts. And I'm not too afraid that I'm going to use all of them someday, but I can Imagine that if you want to print something like this, then 500 inserts might be a bit too much. So I think it's interesting to uh, to sell uh, this as a kit, just uh, the parts, and you can print the printable part yourself and sell the and buy the inserts and these uh, these lock nuts uh, yourself, so you know that uh, you have everything. So that's what I'm thinking of to to start with. It, it's look like a lot of things we can look forward by your side. <laughs> it's a lot of project that you, yeah, you, yeah, you're already here. <laughs> I have um, a list, I have a list, uh, a private list on which all my uh, uh, all my IDs are, uh, wow. are uh, placed. And that list was this long when I started my channel, and it's now yeah, you need a pretty high resolution uh, screen to to show uh, most of it. So that list is getting longer and longer because I get new ideas from from all the ideas, and often I get ideas from uh, from comments or direct mails from people who say you have to try this, and uh, I'm just going to add it to that list and see if I get to it someday. So that um, that at the end of last year when I was working on the, this folder ball machine, mm -hmm. um, the list was already long enough so this this year was already filled up with uh, with ideas so i'm not going to uh, it sounds very familiar <laughs> it's a luxury position to be in i am 
I'm not going to uh, have a writer's block uh, anytime soon, so that's a nice feeling. But uh, on the other hand, there is, there is, a, I already know that there are more ideas than I can ever uh, do before myself. <laughs> yes, I think all of us just waiting for your everything just come out for your idea. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, some some ideas are uh, are just plain stupid, but some are they, yeah, there are some of them that I'm really looking forward to. And uh, printing the rims is one of the ideas that I'm looking forward to. And that idea was uh, wasn't yeah, it was pretty sporadic. I wanted to uh, to go to bed and start sleeping, and mm -hmm. when I closed my eyes, that idea popped in my mind. Yeah, let's print rims oh, for a car. And um, I can tell you, it's pretty difficult to fall asleep uh, after an idea like that. So that was a pretty rough night. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to bite it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, and you see all the, the images uh, in your head for how would it be to have a, a, a rim of this size, 3D printed, and how would it be to, to drive a car with uh, with that? So uh, yeah, I often have the ideas when uh, when I want to sleep. So sometimes don't split as much as I uh, I would want. <laughs> I got that. Uh, yeah, that's the life of uh, life of an engineer, I think. <laughs> yes. So I think it could be one hours for our life. That. <laughs> Yes, people are still very really? really curious for your project, and I think everyone just looking forward, looking forward to it. Two years plan is much too long. <laughs> <laughs> Put another three D printer solution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can always print them yourself, of course. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's always a possibility, and that's I've seen people uh, people printing them. Uh, one, the one, yeah, one one person who said he wasn't very uh, experienced with uh, 3D printing, and he printed everything. He, he printed yeah this whole cable chain and this folding mechanism out of PLA, uh -huh. and for him it it worked. So um, yeah, with a bit of dedication and uh, luck and. Uh, and some, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some, uh, then, then it, most of the, the parts are. Yeah, so you can have more fun. So yeah. Not, not yeah, not just um, a printer model, right? And then you can do some more change and like you, based on your job, and then you, you have a lot of more modified. It, it, it mm. could be more fun, yes. Yeah, and my, um, my theory is that if I'm able to, to print the parts out of polycarbonate, then most people are capable of printing it out of PLA. So, um, yeah, in the, in the, according to that theory, most uh, parts can be printed. Folding printer would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I think after people see your printer, they are looking forward to our, C, uh, our C30. It's also a affordable printer. <laughs> Okay. Yes. I haven't seen it. Yes. Um, okay. So maybe that, that's it for today. And thank you, John. Welcome to uh, share your, your printer to us. Yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, for this opportunity to, to do my story here. At, uh, yeah. At this, uh, for inviting me at this uh, reality uh, show. <laughs> <my> show. <laughs> First time for me going live. So it's, uh, it was, um, yeah, I was very excited, but it's uh, nice to do. Yes, and, uh, and, yeah, and for the people uh, uh, who want, uh, want to get more information for John's video and what he's going to do or what he will be finished, so you, you guys can go to um, his U uh, YouTube channel. I think I post the link. Yes, hmm. or might be, yes, or maybe I can... Um, Maybe you can write down, or maybe you can write down uh, your YouTube channel name over there. Then guys can just 
I can uh, post a comment uh, here. Yes, yes, yes. Post your yes. And then yeah, just yes, post your channel account over there. Then people can follow you and follow your project. Yeah, and also people can uh, can always contact me and find me on my own website. Yes. Uh, I'll copy so, this. And we are looking, and we all all of us looking for you to print the food. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, really yeah. want to. Yeah, some people have watched your channel, so love your channel. Nice. So for some guy, Very yeah. So guy. yeah, so, so go to subscribe. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Everyone. Nice. Yeah, some people know that already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much and thanks for joining with us. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. It was a Thank very you. nice experience doing this live and to show uh, show my my ideas and uh, especially communicating with uh, the people from Creality who made these printers. So that's uh, it's very. I, I never thought that this would happen when I started upgrading Creality printers that I uh, would talk to the actual uh, maker of these printers. So that's that's very awesome. So thanks a lot for this uh, this opportunity. It's very cool, and uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun, and I hope you do too. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks yep. for watching. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.